boy. Yeah, we'll put this on the ground. Hey, everyone. Look at that. Well, I mean, you can't see it right now, but the sun's shining. And the room looks a little different. It's because I moved. I moved. I don't think I said this anywhere. Unless I'm spacing. But yeah, new, new house. Uh... I'll give you guys a tour of the room uh, soon enough. I'm trying to get some shit figured out though. In the meantime, I went to the flea market today. I went to the flea market just a few hours ago, as a matter of fact. Uh, I normally do these at night, but I'm going to be working first shift, so I can't be doing those midnight flea market pickups anymore. So I figured the best time to do it would be uh, in the morning when no one's awake too. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with the records. Got records and games. I think you know what to expect from me from now on. Uh, so here's what I want to show off uh, first. Uh, it's a Depeche Mode single, 12 inch. It's uh, I actually listened to this just before I started recording to see because uh, honestly I've never really listened to much uh, Depeche Mode. Um, I, I figured they'd be a band that I'd like, and, uh, this, this single was actually really good. I liked it a lot. Uh, but, uh, you don't, you don't come across a lot of Depeche Mode at the flea market. And, in fact, the only guy I know who sells Depeche Mode only sells the singles. And they're not cheap, either. I, I saw this in the $5 record bin. I asked for it. Uh, but he, had uh, placed it in the wrong spot. Uh, he gave me a discount though, so I, I paid like 10 bucks for this thing. And, uh, the, what was it, the spine on the back, four ninety eight. so it's double the price. But, you know, whatever, because of shit. It's a, it's a good song. I'm definitely gonna have to get off my ass and listen to some Depeche Mode. And, uh, also, ooh, careful. We have, uh, Simple Minds Celebration. Simple Minds is another band uh, I figured that I'd like. This was in the um, I think the ten dollar bin, but uh, it was a it was a three for it was like a a three for twenty deal or something like that. I got a I got a decent price on this one and it's in good condition. Um, yeah, I mean at Simple Minds though. Don't you forget about me, guys. They also but they've also done like. Like a lot of like 80s soundtrack songs. And uh, I figured I'd, I'd pick this one up. And speaking of 80s soundtracks, this is probably the most expensive record I got. And it's not that bad, but you know, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. <laughs> uh, it, it was 20 bucks for the Pretty in Pink soundtrack. Uh, now, please don't yell at me. But I haven't seen Pretty in Pink. I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> uh, but the soundtrack to this movie is good. So I, I figured I'd pick it up. Because, you know, I felt like splurging. You know, it's got the Smiths. It's got New Order. Joe Jackson. Good shit. So yeah, I figured I'd just I'd pick it up. It's got James Spader. Okay. And, um... Uh, I mean, Molly Ringwald is just really pretty, <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm gonna, definitely gonna have to get that uh, watch that movie sometime. Especially considering I have the soundtrack, it's kind of embarrassing that I haven't watched the movie. So after that, uh, I got um, uh, One for the Road by the Kinks. By the Kinks, right? You know, it's got a, uh, it's got it's got all their hits. It's got all the good ones. It's got all day, all the night. You really got me. You know all that shit. Uh, good stuff. Lola. It's a. This is like a compilation album. I'm pretty sure, but uh, it's got a nice gatefold too. I actually have another like best of compilation of the kinks I, I i don't i actually don't think i have any proper kinks like albums 
But uh, I'm, I'm sure I'll get into it someday. It's only a matter of time. Uh, I actually really like the kinks. I mean, from what I know of the kinks, I, I really like them. And uh, the final record I got, uh, the, guy, the guy I got all of these other records from, uh, me and Brian, we, we buy from him a lot. So he just let us pick like a record from the $5 bin and just, you know, just have it. And uh, I decided to get a, I decided to get this Tears for Fears single, a uh, twelve inch uh, change. Tears for Fears songs from, oh god, it's songs from the Big Chair, I think, not four. Uh, but yeah, that album is honestly, it's probably one of my favorite albums. Uh, songs from the Big Chair, and uh, I figured I'd pick up the single from uh, the Hurting. It's an album I still need to really listen to, but it's, a. Uh, am sure it's good. Like, come on. And that's it for the records, but stick around because I got two more things. One of which is uh, a Japanese uh, Super Famicom. Uh, Super Donkey Kong 3, or as it was called in the States, uh, Donkey Kong Country 3. Uh, it was 15 bucks. Oh, I, I should probably say, for all of the, um, for this stack of records altogether, it was about, like, 50. Uh, which, I'll admit, I probably paid a little more than I should have today, but, uh, whatever. Who cares? And, um, yeah, uh, I actually saw the guy who was selling this the last time when I showed off the Famicom games, uh, I actually did see this alongside A Link to the Past. I was actually going to get the A Link to the Past, but, uh, I decided against it. Because, one, I already have it on, uh, the American version. I'd only be getting it just, like, you know, for the novelty of it. And I, I got those other Famicom games, which I think are pretty decent novelty as is. The, uh, that, uh, Enix game that I got is, like, borderline incomprehensible. I have no clue how I'll be able to play that. The, uh, the Sailor Moon game, though, was, like, a puzzle game. Actually, uh, I, I could see myself playing every once in a while. It's pretty fun. It's got a cute chibi art style for, uh, you know, all the characters and stuff, which is cool. But, um... Yeah, I got this because I have Donkey Kong. Actually, hang on. We're gonna we're gonna draw from the collection real quick. Ooh. See, uh, these carts could be in better condition. I I have to clean them up, obviously. But uh, I got Donkey Kong Country one and two here, and. Uh, I, f I figured I was eventually going to have to round off the collection with Donkey Kong Country 3, but um, a, a game like Donkey Kong Country, you don't really need to know the language to play. It's It kind of speaks for itself, in a way. So I figured why not have uh, Super Donkey Kong Country 3 to round up my, uh, my Donkey Kong collection. And, uh... Honestly, if you want my opinion, Donkey Kong Country 3, because I've, I've played it before, uh, is probably, I think it's honestly better than the first one. I'd say 2 is better than 3, which is better than 1. So, yeah, if you haven't played uh, the Donkey Kong Country games and you like platformers, uh, you really owe it to yourself. At least, just play all of them, I'd say. Because even if I think the first one is, uh, is kind of weak, not kind of weak, are kind of weak in comparison to the other two. Uh, it's still a worthwhile game. And um, just one more thing I got from the flea market. And uh, this was probably my favorite thing I got today. This was this will be the, the uh, finale. It's not as grand as a Sega Saturn. Or um, what did I get last week? I got a GameCube. Uh, yeah, but the GameCube wasn't the wasn't my favorite thing. I think it was, I think my favorite was the Madonna record. But, uh, here you go. Just, uh, let's just show it off. Illusion of Gaia. 
Uh, Illusion of Gaia is a... Uh, what was it? It's one of... It's an action RPG made by... Uh, published by Enix uh, and developed by a developer called Quintet. Now, Quintet is a... Uh, they're... Uh, what's what's the word? They're kind of, they're sort of like a a pretty underrated studio from back then. They made like they pretty much made like nothing but cult classics. So uh, to finally, uh, I've played um, Act Razor and Soul Blazer, uh, both games they made and both excellent games. They they have this uh, sort of like charming jank to them, if that makes any sense. Like they're not they're not like incredibly polished games, at least Act Razor and Soul Blazer, but uh those are very similar sounding titles. <laughs> they're yeah, but they're not very polished games, but the they have a lot of charm and um are pretty unique, which I think more than makes up for. And Illusion of Gaia is a uh, is a favorite for a lot of people. Uh, and I've been meaning to play it for a long time. I actually started a playthrough of it on the SNES Classic I have. But uh, I just never got around to playing it anymore. But I feel like if I have... If I have, like, a physical version of it and, I, you know, I spent money for it, I would uh, be more willing to... Be more willing to play it. Maybe I'll even stream it. Who knows? Uh, I paid 20 bucks for it. Uh, which is pretty much the going price online, so it's not like a, it wasn't like a great flea market, like flea market-esque deal, but, uh, I didn't, I didn't really care. I kind of saw, I kind of saw this in like a bin of a bunch of like sports games and stuff and be like, uh, yeah, let me just grab that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I think that's just about everything. Not a not like a wide variety of stuff this week, but I'm still happy happy with what I got. Mm. So, uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next week, assuming the weather is as beautiful. Oh, uh, I think I'll say this, is that the fucking flea market was packed today. You should have seen it. it was, there were more vendors there than... I think, like, any time, uh, at least this, uh, at least any time this year, even more than Memorial Day. And, uh, that's no doubt part of the, uh, the nice weather. I think the summer season is starting, and hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more people there, or at least vendors. Uh, but yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll have to start pricking two backpacks. Definitely not. No way.